The Adventures of Lolo the Penguin is an animated film from 1986, originally released as a three-part serial. Similar to that of Fritz the Cat, I guess, where three separate stories were combined into a single film, only difference here, apart from the sex and drugs, is that the three Lolo segments actually link much tighter together, and you could watch them in one block without even noticing. The story focuses on the life of a young penguin, named Lolo, who gets up to all sorts of mischievous adventures, which eventually leads to many of his family and friends getting murdered. But we'll get into that in a little bit. This film is actually one that I've never heard of before, but has been long requested by a Patreon supporter, Ramil. Or is it Ramile? Ah, Millie? I don't often do requests solely from Patreons, but he has been a long time supporter of the channel, and even has his own channel where he carries out reviews, so do go check him out. Back to Lolo, the film is an interesting one in on itself, as it was a co-production between Japan and the Soviet Union. And though not the first animated film to do this, it was the first to be primarily made in Russia. The animation itself was handled by Russia, whilst Japan acted more of a sponsor, providing film equipment and tech. The film's original title and little translation is... The Adventures of Small Penguin Lolo. But most people might be more familiar with the later title given, The Adventures of Scamper the Penguin later given the extra title, Tappy Feet. Yeah. This version of the film underwent a lot of changes, such as character names, I've got it, we'll call him Scamper, new music, and quite a few deleted scenes. I will go into more details on this dub later on, but for now, let's take a look at the original, in all of its Soviet Japanese glory. The Adventures of Lolo the Penguin The film opens up with an Aurora Borealis. Uh, Aurora Borealis! Yes. As a narrator introduces us to the basic plot and setting of the film. We see the male penguins arriving in Antarctica as they begin to build their nests, where we very quickly see that penguins are complete arseholes. We're introduced to our two main parents of the film, Toto and Lala, who have just laid a clutch of two eggs. The females have to leave to go hunt and feed in the ocean, leaving the males to guard the eggs. One month passes and the females have still yet to return. Women, am I right? Leaving the males to grow increasingly weak and hungry, eventually driving some of them to go find food for themselves. Of course, the moment the males leave, a flock of gulls swoop in to try and steal the unguarded eggs, resulting in a devastating loss. In the attack, Toto actually loses one of their eggs, but manages to save a neighbour's egg in the process. I'm pretty sure Toto saved the egg from the nest to his right, and is giving the spare egg to his neighbours on the left. Yeah, stealing from people and wrongly distributing it to others, a great leader indeed. Not long after, their egg hatches into a male chick, which they name Lolo. Which I guess is meant to be a combination of Toto and Lala? Alright, dick. Seriously, his child has been alive for one minute and it already seems like he fucking hates him. No wonder he was so keen to give his second egg away. Also, it's surprising to see how many penguins actually have chicks right now, considering earlier on it looked like most of the eggs had gotten stolen or destroyed. We cut forward into the future, where Lolo is now a little more grown up. And yep, it looks like even his mother hates him now. Lolo then meets a young female penguin named Pepe, who will go on to be the most irrelevant character in this entire film. Word gets out that some humans have arrived nearby, and so naturally Lolo is curious and goes out to see them. Along the way, however, he is attacked by some gulls, but is thankfully rescued by a puppy named Don and his terrifying looking owner. Lolo is returned back home, 
to which his parents are overwhelmed with joy to see him safe and well. Oh, wait, never mind. Also, is it me? Or does that guy look like he's getting a little bit too much enjoyment out of this? Yeah, now twist his nipples, Toto. The next day, Lolo and the other penguins are at school learning about survival. You're a genius fuckway, me. Um, yeah, it's a just Really? Because from the videos I've seen, they don't look very calm. Around. Lolo quickly gets bored of class, and so he wanders off to meet with Don again. Obviously, that spanking didn't do too much to deter him. Oh, and he also brings along Pepe. For some reason. Interesting how Lolo knows what a chicken is, but doesn't know local animals such as seals and whales. Lolo is then attacked by a girl and rescued by Don and his owner. Again. Seriously, film? First you're repeating clips? Now it seems like you're repeating entire scenes. Word gets out that Lolo and Pepe have wandered off, causing panic amongst the other penguins. Um, no, I'm pretty sure you made that quite clear to him earlier on. Thankfully, however, Lolo is returned home by the human. Again. You gonna spank him again there, Toto? Aww. More time passes by, and Lolo is now attempting to fly. But a freak accident occurs, which causes him and Pepe to get stranded out at sea. See Pepe? Even Lolo is getting tired of your shit. They are soon attacked by a leopard seal, in what actually has a pretty freaky design to it. But thankfully, a killer whale happens to be lurking nearby, which causes the hunter to become the hunted. Remember kids, the seal was evil, so him getting killed and eaten is a good thing. The two are eventually rescued by a group of humans. Only this time, they aren't friendly, and turn out to be poachers. They have the penguins thrown into a cage, where they are planned to be sold off to a zoo. And Christ, if you thought the first human guy was scary, just wait until you see the look of these guys. They meet a young macaroni penguin called Mac. <laughs> Gee, if only we could somehow slightly squeeze through these wide cage bars. Fortune has it, however, that a storm hits the boat, enabling the penguins to break free. But thanks to Pepe, their freedom doesn't last too long. Good job there, Pepe. And they are soon chased down by the crew. Seriously, what the fuck is with these faces? With some help from the boat's watchdog, the three manage to escape. They come across some friendly blue whales, who offer them a ride back home. Wow, I wish I could speak whale. The penguins are reunited with their families, where even asshole dad seems rejoiced to see them. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. When did they grow up? They were still small when they escaped the boat, so had they been out to sea for months after that? But the important thing is, everyone's safe. So all is good and happy. No, подождите, это не так. So it turns out the poachers from the boat have now turned up on land, and have taken all of the young penguins to have them sold off to zoos. The rest of the penguins charge in to save the kids, in which a heroic rescue takes place. Jesus Christ, what the fuck film? So far this film has actually been pretty tame with the violence. Sure there was a little bit of blood and some creepy looking scenes, but now we've suddenly gone into a penguin massacre. Mommy, can we get happy feet? Oh Snookums. We have happy feet at home. The blast from the guns triggers a large chunk of ice to break into the sea, causing a tsunami which engulfs the entire boat. Oh, no! Killing off all the poachers, and probably also the nice dog that helped him out earlier. Unfortunately, it's not all quite a happy ending though, 
as Toto was one of the penguins killed off in the attack, and so a new leader is needed to take his place. Why? Why is Lolo made leader of the penguins? The only thing he has been shown to do in the film is wander off and get into trouble. And every time he has come close to peril, it has been through sheer dumb luck that he was saved. Nothing by his own actions. Oh, and let's not forget that it was his encounter with the poachers that led them to coming to the mainland in the first place. So in that respect, he's kind of responsible for the death of all the other penguins. And now as his first role of leader, he's about to lead them back into the North Sea, which he has no previous experience of doing whatsoever. This is bigger bullshit than the leader choice in the Animals of Farvinwood Season 3. Plucky will be your new leader. Me? Plucky's the leader! Plucky is! Fuck you, Plucky. Well, Lolo has made the leader, Mac heads off to find his family, and Don leaves without Lolo ever saying goodbye to him. We get another treat to the Aurora Borealis, and the credits roll. And that was Lolo the Penguin. For the most part, the film is a fairly typical kids movie, but where you get the expected cutesy scenes, you're also thrown a selection of not so cutesy scenes. Some being intentionally scary, and others not. And I'm definitely sure that that massacre at the end probably fucked a few little kids up. What I do like about the film though, is how it has a slightly more realistic approach to it, with the opening narration almost sounding like a documentary, and the animals behaving more like, well, animals, and the film not shying away from some of the stuff that goes on in the natural world. The characters are all fine, no one really stood out as anything special, but the only one I really had a problem with was Pepe. Not that she's particularly bad or unlikable, it's just that she doesn't really serve any purpose in the film, other than constantly being the worry wart and whining all the time. As for the animation, it's alright, pretty typical for your director television production in the 1980s. The backgrounds are quite nice and we get some cool shots here and there, the penguins are animated pretty well, but for the humans, yeah it really speaks for itself. I did notice the film is a bit cheeky in how it will reuse certain clips multiple times, but it's nothing horrendous. One of the highlights of this film, however, has to be the music. It offers a constant charm throughout, and I just love the main theme and how grand it sounds. Now if I was going to bring up a negative for the film, it would be that the ending does feel a bit rushed. I thought Don and his owner would have played a larger role in the final showdown, but they literally just stand there as onlookers. Having them fight off the poachers would have shown that Lolo's wandering off at least had some benefit for the penguins. And in the end, Lolo doesn't even say goodbye to Don, and Don just gets told that Lolo has probably forgotten him. <laughs> Speaking of negatives, let's touch upon the scamper version of the film. In this version, quite a few scenes were cut or toned down in order to make it more appealing to kids. This obviously included the penguin shooting at the end, which to be fair, I can understand why they would take this out. The problem this creates though is that we never see Lolo's dad get killed, so it makes no sense at the end of the film when the penguins are selecting a new leader. Plus in this version of the film, that grand musical score I mentioned earlier, it's gone, and replaced by this god awful vocal song. Hell, they even cut out the Aurora Borealis scene at the start of the film. Uh, Aurora Borealis? Yes. May I see it? No. If however you do want to check out an English dub of the film, there is another version that was released after the film came out, which actually keeps most of the original product still intact, including the names, and of course that grand music. You can actually find this version on YouTube, which also adds in the deleted scenes with added English subtitles. 
So my recommendation would be, check out the original dub if you can, you can watch the English dub if you really don't want to read subtitles, and just give the scamper one a miss altogether. Anyway, that about wraps up this review. Thank you so much for watching guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on Lolo, and any other films you think I should cover next. But until the next one guys, take care.